afraid of it, we'll probably fight against them. If you were here, you would want your child to be with that fight every day. You pull out, you that out. And you've got to be exposed to this stuff. And it's not as hard as you want. Right? And if you started doing that,
So we did the medical record review. We decided because of the size of the incident um, and because it was unknown, unknown again what could be going on that we would go ahead and do um, public health interviews. So our communicable disease investigative staff who are public health nurses um, did go ahead and attempt to interview all of the children's parents with the children present to ask them um, a survey question about what they had eaten that day, you know, what their symptoms were, were they better yet, um, and all those typical questions. And they were able to reach 27 of those families. So there were a few that either they were not able to reach or did not want to speak to public health investigators. So they were able to interview 27 of their students. And again, what, you know, they had some open-ended questions. Did your students visit anything unusual? Did they eat anything different besides the school meal? You know, what at what parts of the school meal did they actually eat? Did they eat for breakfast that day or for lunch? Um, they asked all these series of questions, and there was really nothing that came out of those interviews. One thing that they said was that they kept a very simple thing. But other than that, I mean, we, we have we, we don't know for sure, you know, if the students are doing for coming or not. But there were no there was there were no indications, there was no evidence, no reports from any of the students of anything um, that might have caused illness in these students. We did actually consult with the California Department of Public Health Toxicology Outbreak Program. They have a team that can help investigate outbreaks if they're of a toxic nature. Um, we explained to them the kind of situation. By then, we kind of had an idea that most of the students were getting better already, what the symptoms were, what the onset was. They had a few suggestions of you know, double checking about any pesticides. Um, we've already heard that there didn't seem to be any agricultural operations in the area, but we did have the County of Tulare Agricultural Commissioner do a double check. So they looked for a one mile radius around Cleveland School for any pesticide applications that might have happened that week, and they did not find any. So as far as we know, there were no pesticide applications in the area. Again, a little bit odd that there would have only been 30 students affected, but you know, depending on who got reassessed and, and everything, we can get those things. So we did not find any um, reports of any pesticide use. We also asked with the school facilities as well, um, and they told us that they had not done any of that kind of internal, you know, test treatment or anything of that month either. So, in short, we didn't really find a lot of, of evidence for anything specific. One thing we did see was that a lot of students, um, several of them, even at the time of the ED, had a fever. Some of them had a cough or sore throat. And in the interviews that we did, the follow-up interviews after the when they were back at home, a lot of them did have these kind of seasonal illness symptoms. When you read through the, the symptom list that, that people were reporting, a lot of it was things like fever, um, stomach ache, um, feeling tired, cough, sore throat. And we do know that this was the time period where flu, other viruses, norovirus, which is a GI virus that can cause vomiting, these were all increasing in the area and throughout the state at this time. We had other schools in the area that same week reporting to us that 25% of their student population was homesick. So we don't have an absolute, we didn't find anything specific, but it did seem like a fair number of the students may have been kind of in the process of coming down with different illnesses, why they all happen kind of at the same time. It could be that once a few people get ill, you know, then you start noticing your own symptoms, right? And so it kind of been that it could have been that snowball effect where the students all started realizing that they were getting sick. We did notice that looking at the school absence report for that day, the morning before it all happened, the fifth grader had the highest absence rate, or 8.5% fifth graders absent that day. And the fifth grade were the students that were the most affected. So it could be that there were things circulating in the school, flu, norovirus, other regional illnesses that were already circulating. That's one possibility. Um, other than that, um, again, the overall attack rate for the school, we call attack rate, the number of students affected out of the entire school body was less than 10%. So again, you know, no concerning findings in terms of 
Is, is definitely one of the most common newborn infections. It doesn't usually cause outbreaks. And it takes two to three days incubation period to grow, and it's commonly associated with chicken consumption. So the full meal that day was um, spaghetti with meat sauce. And again, it, I'm sure there were children who were really sick. No one is saying that the child you know, wasn't actually sick. We just couldn't find anything that explained all the illnesses together as one event. There were probably multiple, you know, small things going on. Mm -hmm. My name is Sonia Carranza, and I am the program supervisor for the um, department that inspects the, the kitchen at the school site. Um, we did receive the call. Um, we came out uh, with a group of uh, staff that went out and did uh, investigation, thorough investigation, not the typical inspection that we typically do. Um, at this time, we knew there was a, you know, a group of uh, students that had become um, ill or reporting symptoms. So we asked more of, you know, again, what was served, where was it made, how was it made, what ingredients were used. Um, so it's a little more intense. Um, Open-ended questions to the food staff. Um, we did conduct an inspection not just at the um, elementary, but we also did an inspection at the high school the same day um, because um, part of the, the spaghetti itself, the pasta was uh, cooked at the um, at the high school. Um, so again, nothing was found that could have caused um, uh, illness to the students um, during the inspections or during the interviews. We did come back and do a follow-up inspection at the elementary during serving time on Monday. And again, there was nothing found um, during that inspection. Um, again, it was a little more thorough. It was during the serving time. Um, so they um, were out there watching as the serving the meals were um, being just, uh, you know, provided to the students. Um, so nothing that would have caused or required us to close the case. No. So at the end of each, um, when we, for the day of, the, the food is disposed after lunch. Any other questions? <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Do you want me to in English? Yeah. Oh. I want to know what is your experience at the age of the child with 50 and because they have more than 50 times to get the vaccine. So. So during the inspection, like I said, there's a lot of open-ended questions that are asked of the food service. We look at their documentation. There's lunch menu, right, that everybody receives. 
so you guys understand um, and know ahead of time what the students are being served. Um, so, like I said, we weren't able to sample any of the food served that day, um, but there, every, we didn't find anything that was, um, again, that required the closure. Does that make sense? Any other questions?
Thank you for those that came to do the presentation at this time. I'm going to give our board members an opportunity to ask questions. Board members, when you do ask questions, please direct it towards the board members. And if you have any questions.
that sad we talked about what uh, our process is where we've gone through our comprehensive safety plan thoroughly to, uh, and we're going to continue to do it. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a live document. We're going to continue to look at it. We're going to continue to have communication. You know, firm belief that, you know, when it comes to clarity, it's going to be complicated. That's the difference between five and six. And that's something that we can do. Um, also, I know that I bring you a and I know that we take it. Yeah. 